support you to be able to have nourishing food. Thank you, Maxine. Thank you, Thank you Maxine. And to have every possible opportunity to expand your awareness. And India offers that many times over. You know, we're in the presence of some of the greatest saints that are alive on the planet, some that have passed on but have left what they call the samadhi behind. So we feel the energy. So if any of that interests you, and then there's Jamaica. Where's my Jamaica crew? Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! People have been to Jamaica. All right. <coughs> Where in so, India are you going? Oh, we'll first be in Delhi, and we'll stay in the rather splendid Overroy Hotel. Was that nice, Leslie? My favorite. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So the Overoy has to be one of the most elegant, luxurious places because Delhi is a city that takes some getting used to for Westerners. So I always had the idea that staying in a comfortable setting is a good way to be introduced to India. Then we go out to Agra, see the Taj Mahal, of course, the Red Fort. And then we swing down to Pondicherry, which is the seashore. And that was the French tea colony of India. And it's indescribably beautiful. And we stay in a guest house that is an art gallery. So every inch of wall space is covered with beautiful art. It's just gorgeous. And then. And tell them about the shopping. Oh, well, yeah, we did do a little shopping. We did do a little shopping. (laughs) Before, during, and after. (laughs) Yeah, we did a little shopping. It's true. So all of all of the trip, yeah, everything you can imagine. But the point of the trip is, in Delhi we actually visit the Ajit Singh ashram. We meditate there, and we had private audience with the Swami who was there, which is never given to foreigners. And we had an opportunity to go in as a group and ask him any question, which was just tremendous grace to have that. We visit uh, Sri Aurobindo's ashram, and I think for me one of the high points of the trip was we had a private lecture from one of the teachers, Jermundi, who was mm-hmm. about 73 mm-hmm. or 4, mm-hmm. this elegant, tall woman who was so humble. She said, I'm just a simple teacher. I don't know what you people want to talk to me for, <laughs> but you can ask me questions. So I think somebody asked her, I think it was you, who asked her, um, tell us something about Sri Aurobindo's teachings. I have never in my life wanted to touch anyone's feet. <laughs> <laughs> After she finished speaking, I had to touch her feet. I mean, I was so moved. I mean, we were sitting there in tears, all of us. And the way she talked about the mother. It was so beautiful. Mm. It was just, you know when you're drinking from that fountain. <laughs> and we were drinking from the fountain. She told the most beautiful story, and she concluded it by saying, after the end of this, this beautiful, elegant tale, she said, so sometimes, you see, the gods have to become human so that humans can remember that they are gods. Hmm. And it was just <laughs> incredible. Yeah, because uh, she was telling a story of the Mahabharata, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at the gallery, we had a yoga teacher come to our place and where yoga is not just an exercise mm-hmm. it's it's you know the sacred act of honoring your body your temple so that was really special it was really wonderful it was like like into a religion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And imagine doing it in an art gallery. (laughs) So then our final stop is Bangalore. Out to Bangalore to Puja Party to to the ashram of Sai Baba. And Satya Sai Baba is one of the great living saints. Now on any given day, his ashram is like a city. There are tens of thousands of people there. So very different experiences in each one. Very different experiences in each one of the ashrams. So that's India. That's India. We go in January.